Hi, my honeys, Erica here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is pretty epic, I'm not gonna lie. I think this is my favorite Ikea hack that I have ever done. I'm so excited with how it turned out. I think it looks so much more expensive than what I paid to make it. And I have a full tutorial, you guys, so you can recreate this in your home. And I really, really hope you love it just as much as I do. If you're bougie on a budget like me, you're going to want to watch this video. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Give this video a like and a comment. Let me know if you want to see more IKEA hacks on my channel. And let's get started with the video. I decided to hack the Ikea Copang dresser. The size was spot on for my guest bedroom. It's about 67 inches long by 32 inches high and a little over 17 inches deep. It's a perfect low profile dresser for any small bedroom. And I had been seeing these gorgeous anthropology dressers and getting so inspired, but $2,500, that price, cannot afford. And recently my friend Drew from Lone Fox Home did the most gorgeous Ikea Billy bookcase hack for Architectural Digest. I loved the curved architectural detail that he was able to accomplish with pole wrap and it gives this beautiful slatted texture. I knew I could apply that to my dresser. So thank you Drew for the major inspo. Here are the supplies you will need for this project. Everything will be linked in the description box below. There is not a ton of supplies needed for this project. The most money you're gonna spend is on the pull wrap and I'll tell you later on how you can save a little bit on that as well. And here are the tools I used for this project. I will link them in the description box below. I promise you, if I can use these tools, you can too. I am weak sauce, okay? All right, so step one is assembling the dresser. All things considered, this is one of Ikea's easier pieces to put together, or maybe it's just that I've put so many dressers together at this point, I don't know. I was able to do most of it by myself, but I needed my husband a couple of times just to hold up the weight of the dresser while I assembled some of the pieces. But we put the frame together and I'm gonna wait to assemble the drawers later. I did want to quickly mention that before you assemble the dresser, if you wanted to save a step and save a little bit of money, you could take the top of the dresser, take it outside and cut it down by a half inch on either side, which will make it flush with the edges of the dresser. I will explain more later, but that is an option. I did not do this, but I just wanted to mention it. Step two is the step you'll be able to skip if you already cut down the top of your dresser before assembling, but if you didn't, no big deal. You'll just need two of these half inch thick MDF panels. And all I'm measuring is the height and the depth of the dresser so that I can place them on either side of the dresser to make the top of the dresser totally flush with the sides. Super easy to do and I'm just using a tape measure to draw a straight line so that I can cut out my MDF pieces. This is a new tool for me. You just hold it with your left hand at that top lever and then you squeeze the trigger with your thumb and your pointer finger. It is very easy to make straight cuts with this tool. There's a little slot at the front of it and you just keep your line that you marked in the center of it the entire time and it's really easy to cut out. Just make sure you either clamp it or you keep something heavy on the board to hold it down while you're cutting. Now I'm taking some screws and I'm going to screw in the MDF panels on either side. Now you can see that the dresser on the side is now completely flush, which will make for the perfect base for the structural plans that I have for this piece. So I'm just screwing it in in about six places just to make sure that it's nice and secure. Step three is creating the structure of the piece. So I'm going to take two tabletops that I've linked in the description box below. And basically what I wanna do is with my tape measure, I just wanna find the spot on the semicircle where it's roughly 16 and a half inches wide and then draw a line across. And that's gonna be the size of my semicircles to create the sort of rounded structure on the end. And then I'm just taking that same handsaw that I was using before and cutting out each semicircle. You will need two per side of the dresser. 
To attach our semicircles to the side of the dresser, you want one at the top and one at the bottom. I'm using some simple L brackets and some shorter screws that just go right into the MDF. You can use as many brackets as you want, but I found that about three or four on each one made it nice and sturdy. The trick is for the top one, you wanna make it nice and flush, as flush as you can possibly get it and as little gap as possible. We can always fix a little bit later with sanding and some wood filler, but this is what it looks like when the side structure is created. Step four is the most exciting part, pull wrap. If you've never heard of pull wrap before, it is basically wood slats attached to this fabric sort of backing, which makes it nice and flexible so you can create a round shape with it. Here's the backing of it. See how it's nice and flexible? It's really easy to work with and you can cut it down with your miter saw just by rolling it up, measuring and rolling it up. And then you can also cut it vertically with just a razor blade. So I am cutting the first piece, which is going to be going around the side of the dresser. So I needed the height of the dresser. I cut it about 24 inches long, which ended up being too much. So I, I wasn't really sure about the math on that. So I cut a little bit wider than I needed to just to make sure. But see how it's going to form this gorgeous semicircle. When we nail it into that side of the wood semicircle, it will be a perfect rounded edge. To attach the pull wrap to the semicircles that we've installed, you want to use your brad nailer and at least one and a quarter brad nails. That just makes sure it's nice and secure in there. And start from the top and then start going along the bottom and the side as well. You just sort of want to pull it taut as you go so it stays nice and flush against those semicircles to get that perfect rounded shape. Once you get to the edge of your semicircle, you can trim it vertically with your box cutter. Now I am measuring and cutting for the fronts of the drawers that I'm also going to put slats on. I don't think it's necessary to do this across the entire front of the dresser. So if you want to save a little money on this project and you just want to do the rounded edges on the dresser, you could stop there and just swap out the hardware, give the whole piece a coat of paint but I am attaching all the way across. So I wanna make sure that it looks like a very uniform slatted piece. So I actually opted to have the drawers already in place and assembled because I wanted to see how it lined up because Ikea furniture is not perfect. Some things don't always sit exactly flush. So I'm just adding pieces in here. I added a trim piece on the side that's just three slats wide and then I'm finishing all the drawer fronts all the way across. I also added a couple of pieces across the front of each of the legs just to sort of get rid of that Ikea cheap looking leg and make it look a little more substantial. Step five is all the wood filler and sanding you're gonna do for this project. It's a bit tedious, but I promise it's worth it. I'm just using a basic wood filler. I like stuff that's a little less liquidy and a little bit more pasty. It just seems to be a little bit easier to spread on. Basically, you're just gonna cover any gaps with your putty knife and your wood filler. I had some around the semicircle and some along the line of where I attached the semicircle to the dresser. I want to make it seem like one solid piece. So I'm just adding a really thick coat of wood filler and then I will sand it down with my orbital hand sander to give a really smooth finish. After the wood putty is dry, I'm going in with my hand sander with 120 grit on there to really sand it down. And I'm even sanding down the pole wrap where the edge is sticking up a little high in one spot. I just want a really smooth surface overall. Once the top is sanded down, it's time to go in with the wood filler and fill in all of the brad nail holes that we left on the pole wrap. Sand that down quickly with a sand block and you're on to step six, priming, painting, and swapping out the hardware. I'm using my tried and true Zinsser Bin Enamel Primer. This is my go-to for Ikea furniture because that laminate just doesn't want to soak up paint. So I'm priming the top and any edges of the original dresser with the Bin Primer. 
Now it's on to paint. I'm using Magnolia's Pecan Grove. This is a gorgeous brown charcoal with some wine undertones. It's super luxurious and rich. I went with an eggshell finish, which I think is super pretty, but I'm probably gonna seal it at some point with something because I want the dresser to be easy to clean and stay really intact. So just keep that in mind. You may wanna seal it with something down the road. Now it's time to finish off the tops of the drawers. Don't forget to open them and get the tops there. And for the hardware, you can go through the original holes by drilling through the back, but I wanted to move my hardware out a little bit, so I ended up going through the front, which was no problem at all. And I'm using these gorgeous brass knobs that I found from Baldwin that are an inch and a quarter. Who's ready for the reveal of this dresser? I know I am.